Hello everyone, and welcome to Austintronics. In the last video, I introduced you to the mathematics behind a transformation matrix. In this video, I will be showing you principal movements of objects and their corresponding transformations. Now, when I say principal movements, I'm talking about very simple rotations about and translations along an object's coordinate axes. By thinking about movement in this way, it'll allow us to combine these principal movements to solve more complicated problems. Before I move on to real-world examples, it's important to memorize the transformation matrices of six principal movements. These movements are the rotations and translations about and along an object's own x, y, and z axis. Let's first start with rotation. Here's the transformation about an object's own x-axis. Take note that they're all zeros in the translation region, since this is just a pure rotation. When a transformation matrix has only rotation elements, it's sometimes referred to as a rotation matrix. As we go through these rotation matrices, you should start seeing a pattern develop. Pay close attention to the one in the rotation region as we go through the other rotations. You may be curious about the notation I am using for the rotation matrix. The first parameter I have in my rot operator is called a basis vector, which is just a fancy way of referring to one of your frame's axes. In this case, E1 tells you that the rotation is occurring around the x-axis. The second parameter, theta1, tells you how many degrees to rotate about that basis vector. Now we'll be working a lot with these matrices, so here's a widely accepted shorthand notation to make things look cleaner. Here's the rotation about y. Notice how the 1 has shifted to the middle of the rotation region. And this is the rotation about z. Throughout all the principal rotations, the cosine sine sine cosine pattern remains the same. The only thing that changes is the element locations of these trig functions and the negative sign. Use the one shifting down diagonally as a guide to tell you where the trig function should be placed. Translation matrices are a bit easier to remember. This is the notation and movement for translating along the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. The mathematics behind a pure translation looks like this. In a pure translation matrix, the only thing that occupies the rotation region is a 3x3 identity matrix which is just diagonal ones throughout. In the translation region, you'll notice the distances denoted in the respective locations for translation in the x, y, and z. Here's an overview of the principal movements for rotation and translation. This will be a good place to stop before the next video, where we'll be going over an example on how to derive a transformation by combining these principal movements. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.